OK, let's have a look at how we can create some technical drawings uh, with things like the cut list on there. So back over in SolidWorks, first thing I'm going to do is just to show you that we've got a cut list. So this cut list folder is something that pops up when we create a weldment. And all I'm going to do is right click on it and say update. And also I'm going to right click on it and say create for me a bounding box. Now a bounding box is basically going to ask SolidWorks to measure the biggest X, Y and Z dimensions of all of those individual panels and then report it back to me. So if I now create a technical drawing, let's create an A3 technical drawing here. We've got a series of predefined views over here, which I can just drag across. So we'll have maybe a front view, maybe a side view, a top view, and maybe an isometric view. Now, what we can do with the isometric view, I'm just going to change the display slightly. It's just a reference view, but also I'm going to explode it as well. So you can see that we can explode it there. We could then uh, come in here and automatically add all the dimensions that we want for this technical drawing just by using the dimensions that I popped into the SolidWorks model. As you can see, it puts them all down. Um, just for clarity, I'm going to leave those off, but it's a, it, there is a, a very quick way of automatically doing that, as you can see. Um, we'll just leave those off for now. What I might actually do is just strap a couple of um, reference dimensions, so just my overall um, height, width, and depth, always just to make sure that people um, have got the correct scale when they're actually looking at this. So let's just do that. And then what we can do is just bring those in a bit which they behave quite nicely as you can see. And then if I just right click on this view over here, I'm just going to go down to tables, over to Weldment cut list, click OK, and then it creates for us a great cut list. As you can see, it's identified all of those individual bodies. Um, so it's picking up. Now it says plate here, but that can actually by default say anything you like. Mine's just um, defaulted to saying plate, but it's telling me my thickness first. So 18 mil thick for pretty much most of it. Um, apart from we've got this 10 mil thick plate here. Uh, which is, what is that? My 10 mil thick plate is, I'm not sure what that is actually. We'll find out when we do our balloons. But we've got our, um, in fact, sorry, that's our, our dowels. Those are our dowels there. It's just recorded that as it's, it's measured it as opposed to dowels. So I could go back and I could just change that to dowels. Um, now you can see we've got some lengths associated with some of the items. And that's my items four and five, which is my baton. So it's telling me I've got two lengths of 458 and I've got one length across the back of 525 of my one by two inch rough cut. So all I then need to do is to come up here. I could use auto balloons for this. Um, I prefer just to uh, do it manually, actually, the good old fashioned way. Take a small amount of enjoyment from it for some reason. A bit strange like that. Um, but you can see it's really easy just to go ahead and uh, click on some of these, identify the baton, etc, uh, etc. Et we've got our shelf in there, which is going to be a different size, obviously, because we've got the clearance. And there's a nice way of being able to identify what's actually going on. Now also over here, this is a great way of being able to uh, manage the information. So this has automatically filled itself out as well. So that's great. So that's just a right click on any drawing view, go down to um, cut lists and create yourselves a cut list. So really, really simple, really, really easy to do. Just while I was talking about technical drawings, if I actually come over here, let's just isolate this particular body. What we can do is we can export out this face as a DXF we want to. If we just right click on here and export out to DXF DWG, it will actually just take that outline and save it directly to DXF or DWG. So if you've got any kind of you know, CNC that can read in DXF DWG, then this is a great way of, again, being able to create a path or a cut path to actually go ahead and create that panel. And we work with various companies as well, so some partner products that will do this automatically, actually you know, lay it all out and nest it and everything for you. Um, but certainly in SolidWorks, this is a great way of being able to do that auto, uh, manually, just to export out DXF and DWG D G data, something like that. So that's, uh, that's technical drawings. So really quick and simple to create our views, our standard views. We can automatically uh, dimension it as well. Now I've taken those away just for clarity, but you could see that was just using model items. So if you haven't used those before, have a go. I always find it's easier to dump all of your dimensions down there and then just remove the ones you don't want as opposed to the other way around. We're able to define things like section views uh, and detail views and other views like that. Really, really useful. And also we're able to export out technical drawings to e-drawings or to PDF or DXF. Um, I'm not going to show that, but that's just a simple save as, and we can save it as an e-drawing um, that we can view with our free viewer tool.